Hello everyone. In this demonstration, I'll show how to bring a designer sketch into Katia, then generate curves and surfaces respecting the original intent of the sketch. And the end results show how we can take an idea and bring it to life in a 3D model. In this example, we have a completed interior door trim panel. An industrial designer has sketched out a profile for a proposed speaker grill and asked me to import the drawing and bake it into this door panel. Importing a sketch is fairly straightforward. Just make sure that your part is inside a product structure because the Katia V5 sketch tracer is a product level application. And another very important point to note, before importing the sketch, make sure to be in its corresponding view. Otherwise, it will be skewed from the 3D model. In this case, I know the designer worked in a side view, so I am good to go, but if the sketch is created from another perspective, then it's advised to first set up a view with that same perspective. As far as scaling is concerned, this is done after importing the sketch, as you will see in a moment. So to get started, I double click at the assembly level and bring up the sketch tracer. Now it's just a matter of choosing the import icon and selecting the image that I want. This application will accept your standard image formats such as JPEG, bitmap, TIP, and PNG. So I choose the image and click open and now have it immersed into my part. Okay, now is the point where the sketch is lined up and scaled to match our model. This may look a little confusing because it appears that I am moving the geometry and visually this may be true, but in reality the drawing is moving in space. All you need to be concerned with is getting them aligned. I can freely translate the drawing or lock in a direction by pulling on a directional arrow. So I'm going to focus on the lower right side corner, then choose the manipulator above the arc to change the scale. It's a back and forth process, but we get closer with every iteration. And now I'm just slightly changing the zoom in and out to visually line up the drawing. Okay, this looks pretty good. Now I can crop the image by pulling in the corners, in this case, cutting out the perspective drawing. And once accepted, I am returned to 3D space where the drawing can be repositioned in front or behind the part. You can always verify the sketch placement by pulling it through, looking for feature alignments and things of this nature. The opacity can also be changed by going into the properties and using the slider bar to adjust. And I'd like to increase the transparency, better visualizing both the drawing and the geometry. And so now I'm ready to generate curves to define our feature. So while still in the side view, I enter the 3D curve command with a datum turned on. Now before we start, it's very important to make sure that the compass is oriented to XZ because as we define our curve points, I want them plotted onto this plane, which is consistent with the side view. Otherwise, I will not be real happy with the results. The creation type is set to near points, which is going to produce Bezier curves, not splines. Okay. Now I'm going to make four preliminary curves, roughly capturing the edges in between the corners, starting at the top, now on to the right side, the bottom edge, and finally to the left side. At this point, I'm going to increase the opacity. So I can get a clearer view of the sketch and extrapolate the curves so we have distinct intersections. Now it's time to refine the curves, making sure that they match the designer's intent. And to do the job properly, I disproportionately stretch the view, which exaggerates the shape on the screen. This is a must do in class A design for this reason and also to produce high quality results by eliminating unintended inflections and flat features. And starting with the top curve, it's pretty obvious that this doesn't match properly. 
Scrutinizing curves while in this mode is the best way to ensure we satisfy our requirements. So it's just a slight modification. This curve now looks pretty good. Same thing with the bottom curve. Just a few adjustments. And I am done. With the right side, I only created a two order curve and need to add a third order. But I need to define the plane. So to do this, the translation direction in my dialog box needs to be set to the compass plane, which we set to XZ earlier. So I pull my middle point and now have my plane defined. I'm just going to do a screen rotation and go back into a stretch view to refine the right side. And finally, with the left side curve, this one looks a little flat. So here I am pulling the middle point up and the outside points down. Now it's time to add the corner shapes. There are a couple very good options for this. Blend curves are really flexible and work well, but in this case, I am going to use styling corner. Feel free to use them interchangeably, whatever works for your design. In my dialog box, I have G3 continuity set and the trim option turned on. So every subsequent corner builds off the last one. And after making some length adjustments and clicking OK, I reach the last corner where there is an option to deselect curve 2, letting Katia know to close the curve with the final corner. And that completes the curve. Next, I'm going to project it to our surface in the Y direction. The projected curve will be used to define the speaker grill bezel and surrounding area. And we're going to accomplish this with an advanced surfacing blend feature called Accelerated Surface. There are only two required inputs, a curve and a surface. Here I have settings to generate a G2 blend with the boundary being offset six millimeters outside of the input curve. The distance field is set to one millimeter. This is a normal offset of the curve to the main surface and serves as the second limit of our blend. I have the trim option turned on and click OK. And here is my resulting surface, but I'm not finished yet. So in the tree, I'm going to copy and paste the feature, then re-enter the duplicated accelerated surface, where I am reversing the direction and changing the offset value to four millimeters. And after hitting OK, I have a nicely finished off feature. At this point, I validate the feature by bringing the sketch back in and overlaying it to the surface. It looks great. And just as an added bonus, the way we created this model, it's easy to make changes to this feature in case of any requirements change. So here I am using the move command to translate the left side curve. Watch how it drives the features quickly making the change. And again, this time by modifying the control points to the top curve. And that concludes this demonstration where we brought a 2D sketch to life in our 3D model. Thank you.